What's going on everybody? It's Frito here for Clickheads. Huge new rank system for Act 2 in Valorant, some really important bugs you'll want to know about, and more. Getting right into it, Riot released a new blog post discussing Act 2 ranks and competitive changes. They go into explain that the current competitive system, your matchmaking rank, or MMR, is tied to your current fluid skill level, which is to say, if you're having a good day or a bad day, it can very quickly go up or down. This is important to a matchmaking system because for every isolated game, they want to attempt to make the skill levels on both sides as even as possible. But what they're making is a new system that also promotes growth and engagement over what they call peaking at your top rank, getting anxious about losing it, and then stuffing it away. So as far as I can tell, the original rank system is staying as you know it. But they're adding an additional one, which is what they're calling the act ranks. And what this new act rank system will do is store your nine best ranked wins for the entire act. So if you peek into diamond, but drop into gold, your act rank will remember the high points. Here's a quick breakdown of the details. They say your matchmaking rank will still be a close reflection of your current skill. That's the fluid one we talked about. But the new thing is the act ranks, which will track your quote proven skill, which is a new thing that they've instituted that tracks your highest ranked win and number of competitive wins in the act. And at the end of each act, those that accomplishments are going to be preserved as a badge in your player card. This is a way of trying to both show the high points as well as the relative median and hold on to accomplishments where you peak higher but drop lower. And as well, along with the ranked wins, you'll also be unlocking a border, which was previously leaked based on the number of competitive wins in the act. So the more you play, the more you'll progress on that. They go on to say, as you play, your act rank fills with smaller triangles. Each triangle represents your ranked match wins, and it's always based on the rank you entered that game with, and wins at higher ranks visually replace your lowest wins to display your best competitive games. I think this visual aid is a little confusing, and I think it's gonna be pretty rare that you're gonna find a player in a two-month period make four full ranked increases. That would be pretty nuts. So for most players, I think it's reasonable to see one to two ranks in a given act, unless you're really grinding, but this visual indicator shows you what it would look like if you quickly went up the ranks. They said the borders that were previously leaked by Floxy will upgrade at the following win thresholds at 9, 25, 50, 75, and 100 ranked wins. And starting in Act 2, your friends will be able to inspect your match history, including both your matchmaking rank and your overall Act rank progress. And it doesn't say here specifically, but I would imagine that each one of these individual triangles corresponds with a specific match in your match history and i'd hope you'd be able to click on it and then go to the stats and performance of that if it's going to store all this information but we'll have to see when this kicks in officially with the new act being launched now there's a little bit of a difference between the act rank that shows off lots of games and your act rank badge which i think instead is a overview and only the tip of the triangle of your nine best games which is the goal of this new system to highlight the high points of your career it's this more zoomed in triangle that's going to show off your top nine games and if you prove you can win enough at a given rank even if your current matchmaking rating can't hang there forever you can still earn an act rank for players that can peak up into that rank if that makes sense this entire system is built to incentivize you to keep playing rather than being afraid of losing your rank which will still happen with your normal mmr but it gives you something to hold on to to push forward to continue to gain something rather than feeling like every time you hit q you have a potential to lose something you've earned, which still somewhat is the case with your MMR normal rank. But if you're a bit more of an inconsistent player or, for example, play with friends where the matchmaking is in fact much harder, hilariously so, for a big percentage of your playtime, working towards this act rank badge to show the high points of your act performance can offset the pain of the game to game fluid MMR ranked losses on any given day. Now, they do say they're not going to have an act rank badge for act one, the one we just had. 
Instead, this is going to be something that's going to kick off and begin during act two. So whereas your current rank for normal fluid MMR can go widely up or down, your act rank badge will at a glance show off your top nine games from the past two months to show where your peak is. They close the blog post and saying that with each act, they plan to deliver a host of fresh content as well as balance changes. So we assume Killjoy is going to be the new agent as well as probably an entirely new meta that comes through with it. And with that, they're going to consider acts as a good way to package those time frames of different eras of metas and the state of the game, etc. Here they explain what happens at the end of an act for competitive. Your prior act rank will be saved and locked in your career tab, so you can look back at it. Then when a new act starts, you'll be put back into abridged placements, and it will take three games to display your matchmaking rank instead of the initial five, building off of what you've previously done. They say placement games don't count towards your act rank, and this gets confusing because now there's match rank and act rank. Okay, one is the current one we're used to. The other one is the overview. After you complete your placements, they're going to place you conservatively, which is to say kind of a soft MMR reset. They say typically your match rank will land a couple tiers below where you ended prior to the act, but will be increasing how heavily we weigh performance in your early games so you can quickly improve your matchmaking rank if you play well and win. This is, of course, intended for for players that take a break from the game and come back, especially when there's new content in the game or severe balance changes and things like that. They don't want you to have too rough of a time. And instead, this allows you some time to feel out your surroundings and hopefully land more comfortably rather than just being rusty and getting trashed. Or even for returning players, give them something to work up towards again. Keeping in mind that even if you do place a bit lower, if you pop off in those games, you can quickly return to where you were. So that's it for the new ranked system. In short, matchmaking rating will work as you always remember, but there's also the act rank to work towards as well as the act rank badge that will at a glance show the highlights of where you can peak as a player, which will be a useful tool to contrast towards your current rank when you're peaking above or dropping below where your typical comfort area is and hopefully not make it so painful to fluctuate with your MMR rank. Next up in the news, Radionite points have been suspended in South Korea. It was translated on Reddit by TMD saying the Korean Game Content Rating Board ordered Riot to cease Radionite point purchases. So perhaps this might be Riot conflicting with some government regulation that requires costs to be more upfront, or perhaps it's due to the way they're marketed, in my opinion, is a little bit fishy, where it is kind of hard to access the information that all the flashy animations require hundreds more dollars in order to unlock, as we've covered in the past, the Elder Flame skin bundle may have looked pricey enough on its own at about $100. To fully upgrade it, buying Radiantite from the shop would cost closer to $300. And I anyway think the game is purposefully confusing in this regard. But without an official statement, it's hard to know why the Korean Game Content Rating Board decided to make this call, but it's definitely a story that we're going to keep an eye on. Next up in the news, we're going to show you a couple quick game-breaking bugs. This one was found by random person on Reddit. This is an omen teleport wall hack trick where you hide behind your own smoke and for whatever reason, the teleport animation allows your teammate to clearly see the silhouette of an enemy through a smoke. So be on the lookout for that. As well, it was found by PW on Reddit, a way to use run it back to glitch out the bomb plant spot and put it in an unexpected location, then recreated by Mendo, where he says he just used the alt bar to know when he had to press plant and with that the bomb will finish planting and be teleported back to where you use the ability i'm gonna want to know your thoughts on this in the comment section down below because i'm unsure about this i almost think that this could be an okay use of the ability and could make for some pretty interesting plays because remember normally you can use run it back to get insane value and i'm not so sure that this is even always a good thing to do so because of that my knee-jerk reaction is i don't think this is even broken because there is limited places for this to work work obviously it like breaks the logic of the game but I don't think it's such an advantage that it's a bad thing but maybe I'm just too crazy and this does break the competitive integrity if you feel that way let us know in the comment section down below and hey if you're enjoying this news roundup video be sure to hit the bell icon so that you can get notified when our new videos come out get a notification sent directly to your cell phone so you don't miss any of our content next up wanted to quickly recap you this past weekend's esports news the PAX Arena Invitation just finished yesterday
yesterday. As always, ESPN has a pretty good article recapping this. So if you don't want spoilers, skip past this section. But it consisted of two big storyline shockers. TSM and T1, who were previously seen as the top teams in North America, both got upset in fairly large ways. T1 to a bunch of unsigned players with Team Homeless. And TSM, frankly, smacked around by Sentinels, who have finally come into their own. Sentinels play with their own flashy brand of Valorant, where former Overwatch League MVP Sinatra brings forth a lot of mastery of weapons that other players just don't even attempt to use, like the Frenzy and Pistol Round or the Odin for big spray downs and wall bangs. But the team's MVP for this tournament was their aggressive Sage player, Sick, who has a very different playstyle to the agent, often taking aggressive angles with the operator. The second place team yet again was Cloud9, who also took second in the Pulse Invitational, who showed off some extreme high points led by their star player, Tens, who many might say is the best player in Valorant and one of the few players in the world who can single-handedly win rounds for probably any team, most famous for his aggressive jet tactics. The results of this tournament sort of broke all the rules of established Valorant meta and perhaps wrote new ones, where the teams that we thought were at the top struggled and a team like Sentinels, who were really struggling to find their footing for months, now look like one of the scariest teams. So we're definitely gonna need some more competition in order for the scene to find its footing, which might feel a little bit difficult with an entire new Act, new agent and new metagame coming right around the corner. Moving on, next big news item is there has been a growing conversation about the differences between the Vandal and Phantom. Hugely important information that you'll want to know about. A pair of posts on Reddit from Don and Harder Boy shows off different tests on the Vandal's long range first shot accuracy, or should I say inaccuracy? These posts go further in depth, but in short, it was originally believed due to its damage strength above the Phantom at further range that the Vandal was preferred at longer range. That makes sense, right? If it holds its one shot kill further, you would imagine that the Vandal would be better at longer ranges. The problem is based on these two tests, on first shot inaccuracy, the Vandal is performing significantly worse in the accuracy department. And because of that, those longer range engagements where the Vandal's supposed to be better, it's not as accurate as the Phantom. Now to clear up some confusion about this, this whole RNG conversation is not new to tack shooters. In fact, it's been in CSGO forever, but a big difference point between CSGO and Valorant is that CSGO has fairly reliable spray patterns. They deviate a bit, but they stay the same in the general motion they take throughout an entire clip as you shoot. Whereas Valorant, after the first half a dozen shots or so, they go completely RNG. So because of that, Valorant as a game is a lot more about your initial tap and burst than it is using your spray. The CSGO AK has this same problem, but because spraying is so much better, it doesn't harm the weapon's performance nearly as much. So a lot of players conclude that this is why the top level players use the Phantom almost exclusively. But I'll have you remember that the Phantom's one shot kill to the head range is relatively short, just 15 meters. So although the Vandal struggles at those much longer ranges in terms of accuracy, its first shot capability at medium range is pretty good, but in a pro's hands anyway, they seem to just want to control the spray of the Phantom Phantom, which is why they go with that. I prefer the Vandal personally, unless I'm in close range where that fire rate really matters. But in a pro's hands with much better control and aim, the Phantom seems to be the go-to almost universally. And I wonder if they correct the gap of this a little bit, if we can see a bit more Vandal use, because surprisingly in the recent pro tournament, I saw some Vandals get picked on the map split, which might seem like an odd place for it because it's a lot of close range engagements. But I think if you remember back to my earlier point, the Vandal's actual strength is in those medium range one taps. So perhaps that's why I've seen pros opt for the Vandal on pretty much just that map. But we'll have to see if any changes comes to this to adjust the pro pick rates with hopefully not affecting the regular ranked players perception. Because in fact, from what I've seen anyway, most average level players in ranked seem to prefer the Vandal a lot of the time, or at least more 50-50 on it. Last up for the video, I wanted to show off this incredible illustration cosplay combo. Yaju drew 
up this striking illustration of Viper in a casual outfit. This is the type of thing that starts to get your imagination going on what's possible with agent skins in the game, which we expect will be coming eventually once they figure out how to do it right. And to follow this up, Tsukimi on Twitter posts this incredible lifelike recreation of the illustration. I mean, it's just exact one-to-one. -one. It's pretty rare that you see something this accurate in real life. And I think her hair looks exactly like Viper's does in game. Pretty remarkable stuff. But that's going to be it for today's news roundup video. If you find anything interesting that you think we should cover, feel free to hit us a mention on Twitter at ClickHeadsYT. Our Twitter link is in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to leave it with a like. It really does help us out. Let's us know that you're enjoying the content. And on your way out, don't forget to hit the bell icon to actually get notified when our videos come live. That's been it for me. I've been Frito for ClickHeads. We'll see you guys next time.